Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to perform the task of subnetting. The reason for subnetting a, an IP address range is firstly to allocate the addresses to hosts or networks. So we're basically splitting networks up. The other one is for some security as hosts on a certain IP range cannot see other hosts on another range. Another reason is to efficiently allocate IP addresses instead of wasting the addresses. All right, there are many reasons. There are more reasons which you can uh, go and look up on the internet, but the purpose of this video is to demonstrate how to. How do we submit? All right, first and foremost, I'd like to just uh, acknowledge Jeremy Chiara from CBD Nuggets, who I got this method from. All right, this point of subnetting can be described into two parts. So the notes that I have here are described as part one, and later on you'll see there is a part two. And the reason why there's two parts is we can subnet based on determining networks, and we can subnet based on determining the amount of hosts. So we're going to start with part one, which is determining networks. And they actually follow a very similar process, uh, methodology with one, one minor change. All right, so let's start. And uh, Jeremy's method relies on a step-by-step -step approach, which actually does not use that much mathematics. So this is actually a very easy approach. However, at the end, I am going to have to explain some of the special cases. So that's the downfall of the method. But I have to say that of the subnetting methods that I have reviewed over the years, uh, this one is definitely the easiest. All right. He's got four examples. He calls it scenario one, two, three, and four. All right. So basically, it's example one, two, three, and four. So let's start with example one. Determining the networks, part one. A company has purchased the class C address 2162150, and they need to use it to address their network as shown below. All right. So let's say, for example, we have a company. Maybe this is a mass mart store, um, maybe it's an Apple store, whatever. All right, so I've got three branches here. This is in Johannesburg, there's another branch in Durban, and there's another branch in Cape Town. This company, let's call the company Edgar's, and they come to you and they say to you, right, we need you, your IT company, to uh, set up our network. We've already purchased the C class C address 2162150, but we need you to allocate these addresses in a way that we can have our branches. All right, so this is a fictitious example, and it's really just meant to get you the ball rolling into doing subnet, subnetting. There, there is a shortfall in terms of this example. It's not a fully realistic, but the point is, is to follow the steps. All right, so the first thing you need to do is step one, determine the number of networks needed and convert to binary. Right, looking at this diagram, how many networks do you think we would need? All right, each interface of a router is a network. So these are the users here in the Johannesburg branch. And these are the users in the Durban branch. And these are in Cape Town. So we've already got one, two, three. But we still need to connect these networks together. So every interface of a router is a network. So unfortunately, it is one, two, three four, five. So if I have to ask how many networks we need, we need five. If you wanted to add redundancy and link this router to this router, well, then you would need six. But anyway, the example shows five. So step one, determine the number of networks needed and convert to binary. We've agreed we need five, a minimum of five networks. And now what is five in binary? Simple. Here is the binary to decimal conversion, and we can see that 5 consists of a 4 and a 1, so we'd have 1, 0, 1. And there we go, 5 is 1, 0, 1. If you are unsure of the binary to decimal conversion, you can do this on your calculator. Right, I have put the standard Windows calculator on the screen, and I've just can set it up to programmer. And if you want to do the binary to decimal conversion and decimal to binary, you can use the calculator. It is a good idea to know this off by heart. But uh, we want to do 5, so let's just cancel that, 5. 
and there is the binary equivalent of the decimal number five. It is, well, they put a zero there, but it is one zero one. So that is the binary number. Now, using this number, we use it and we say, how many bit positions are being held by this five network requirement? All right, so we have one bit position, two bit position, three bit position. So it's actually five is actually three bit positions. Now, why is that important? All right, let's move to step two. Jeremy says we need to reserve bits in the subnet mask and find the increment. Now, they said, the client said to you they bought a class C address. Now, the subnet mask of a class C address is 255.255.255.0. This is a standard thing. You should know this off by heart. So, what does 255.255.255.0 mean? Well, let's look at it in terms of ones and zeros, binary. There are 255 uh, options in the first octet. This is called an octet. So it has got eight ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, what is eight ones in decimal? Let's just do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so eight ones, and we want it into binary. So let's put it into binary. Uh, okay, sorry, I made a mistake there. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now look what happens when I put the binary number. If we come to the binary to decimal conversion table, you can see that if all of these are ones, then what we need to do is just work it out. You say 128 times a plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 will actually give you 255. So that's what 255 means. It means all the bit positions are actually sitting in the position of a 1. It's set to a 1. So we have 255, 255, 255. Now the second subnet is also all ones and that is why it is 255 255 so we've got the first set of ones the second set of ones and the third set of ones all being uh, set to ones right now the class C allows the last space here to be hosts now just to recap for those of you who are not familiar what does this all mean I just will show you the notation I have it somewhere here you're right a class C allows us to have Networks, 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 and only the last octet is actually the host section, which means the last um, address range in the fourth octet is assignable for hosts. So how many hosts can, should we actually be getting on a Class C network? It is 254 hosts per network, and... What is the default subnet mask? 255, 255, 255, 0. So where does this come from? Well, here is the table. And class B is 128 to 191. What does the 128 to 191 mean? That is the actual IP address range. Um, whereas the class C is 192 to 224. If you see an IP address that is 192.168, Dot one, dot one. You immediately know it is a class C because it starts with a 192. If it is a 222.1.1.1, two, 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 dot one, dot one, dot one, you also know it is a class C because it was under the, or it was under 223, although 223 is still included. If you had an IP address of 10.1.1.1, dot one, dot one, dot one, you know it has to be class A because 10 falls between 1 and 126. All right, so this is where this comes from. And then the class A is network, hosts, hosts, hosts. So you can see that the availability of hosts in a class A address is humongous. 16 million, 777,000, etc. hosts. And as we go down the class, you can see there are less, uh, less um, host and more networks. So that is how the IP version 4 address range works and very outdated now although we are still using it so that is one of the reasons why I made this video. Okay so this was a class C address so it is network 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 hosts and that is why the IP address is 255 255 255 0.
shortly I'll be doing an example with a B uh, class and you'll see it'll be network, network, host, host. Here we have 255, 255, zero, zero. The last two octets are reserved just for hosts. And this is the one of the reasons for the subnetting is sometimes these addresses, do, we do not need to have fixed amounts of hosts of 254. Maybe we only want in that little network to have four hosts per network. And then we'll subnet the class C in order to get four hosts, but then we'll get many more networks. Okay, that doesn't make sense. It will make sense shortly. Let's carry on with the example. All right, so I said, reserve the bits in subnet mask and find your increment. Right, how many bits did it take? Well, uh, three, because the number of networks was five. How many bit positions? One, two, three. All right, so I can now reserve my bits. One, two, three. We need three network bits to get five networks, i.e. five in binary was 101, 101. And that is three bits in order were required in order to get the decimal of five. So Jeremy now says reserve them. What we're doing is we are actually reducing the amount of hosts available in this last octet in order to give us more networks. So we're actually doing a little bit of a trade here. So we're blanking off one, two, three bit positions to give us more networks, but then we will have fewer hosts per network, but then we will be able to assign hosts to each one of these networks, now in, in the form of a subnet, or many subnets. Right, okay, so now let's carry on with the example. The three bit positions here can now be written with a new subnet. The new subnet is 255, 255, 255, 224. Where does this 224 come from? Well, if you work this out into by a decimal, if you put a 1, a 1, a 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and you convert that to decimal, you will see that 128 plus 64 plus 32 is 224. You could bring out the calculator, but you would get, out, you would get the same answer. So this is our new subnet mask for this layout. So it becomes 255, 255, 255, 224. If you set up your network with this subnet mask, you will be able to get five networks. And you may also write it in the classless address system, which is slash 27. So it could just be the IP address forward slash 27. What is 27? Where do you get this 27? Well, easy. How many ones are here? Eight. How many ones are here? Eight. And here, 8. So we've got 8, 16, 24, 25, 26, 27. So that is 224 or 27. Same difference. Now, here's the next point. This lowest bit position here is in which decimal location? Right. So we see. The first one is 128. The second one is 64. The third one, the third one is in 32. So this last bit position is holding the location of decimal 32. And that is a very important point. The increment is the lowest network bit converted back to decimal. That is Jeremy's rule. So what we need to do is we need to use this 32, which I got from here, and now create the ranges. All right, the address they bought was the 2162150 address. So now we are going to add 32 to the starting address until we get our five networks. For example, 2162150, add 32, and that is the number, this one over here, is the number of the next address uh, network. Now, this part may be a bit confusing. This is the first network, 2162150. It is the 2162150 network. Remember, in addressing, we need to have two addresses, one to be the network ID or identifier, and one to be the broadcast address. So the very first address is actually the name of the network, and the last address is the broadcasting address which you may not assign. You may not assign the first or the last. 
So let's see, how did the 32 work here? If you start on 0, and you say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the way to 31, you will actually realize you have used 32 locations. Remember that in decimal, we usually start counting from 1. So 1 is 1, 2 is 2. But in binary, 0 holds a location. So if we start from 0, you can actually use that first IP address, and that IP address is actually the name of the network. So it is the 0 network, and the first host which you may actually set up is 216.21.5.1. So that is the first host, and you can do that all the way up to 216.21.5.30. You now have 30 hosts on the 216.21.5.0 network. If on that network you wish to send packets to everybody on the network, maybe you've just plugged in your Ethernet cable and the network card then sends a broadcast, it will then send it to the 216.21.5.30. 31 address, which means everybody in the network will get it. So this is not an assignable address. 31 is not allowed, you're not allowed to assign it or configure it onto a one of the hosts. All right, let's move on. The next network range is the 2162152. Now, if you add 32 to 32, you should get 64. But remember, that the very first position, 32, is usable as the network number. So 32 is location, is the beginning of the, the addressing system. So therefore we have 32 positions, 32, 34, 35, 36, all the way to 63. And if you count that on your finger, you will see that at 63, we've already used 32. Therefore the next address range starts at 64. You could just say 0, 32, 64, 96. Between these addresses are, is 32. However, this will get confusing when we go to the class B or class A example. So I just need you to understand that because we started on 0, adding 32 actually gets to 31 because the first position is a 0. Right, now let's look at the layout of the network. Network 1 consists of the addresses 2162150 all the way to 2162151531. And you can apply this to the remaining four. And just out of interest, we do have a router interface sitting here, Johannesburg to Cape Town, and it has it just realistically it would have too many addresses. We don't need so many addresses just for two interfaces on a router. So this is just a fictitious example. All right, so that is actually how you submit the network, and it's actually done. All right, should we go on to the next example? I'm going to do an example a lot faster now, and I'm going to say, right, an organization needs 50 networks. They bought a class C address, 195.520.0. Determine the subnets for this network. To recap, they want 50 networks, they got a class C. Perfect. Step one. Determine the number of networks needed and convert to binary. Right, how many networks do they need? 50. There's 50. Convert 50 to binary, no problem. Here's our calculator, and you can say decimal, and you can say 50. And how many bit positions does it take? Well, 50 in binary is 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so how many bit positions? We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so in order to get 50 networks, we need to reserve 6 bits. Why are we reserving 6 bits? As I said, because we want to get more networks out of this class C octet. And that is why we are blocking off these ones here in order to get networks. Right, so we need 6 networks bits. We need 6 network bits to get 50 networks. The subnet mask was 255.255. .255 zero and now we've got to change that blank off one two three four five six it's blanked off convert that to decimal easy one two three four five six add it all up 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 plus 4 is 252 so this is our new subnet mask 255 255 255 252 or the cider of 30 8 16 
24, 25, 10, 16, 17, 8, 9, 30. Right, there's your sign up. Now, looking at the lowest bit position, we can see that it is in the placeholder of 4. Can you see 4 is here? It is the third last bit, and that becomes our increment. The increment is the lowest network bit converted back to decimal. Now, use the increment to find your network ranges. They bought a 195-520 network. If we increment it by 4, if we started on 0, 0 being the first position, 1, so it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 3 is the last broadcast address. It is the broadcast of this very first network called the 195-520 network. You may not allocate the 195-520 or the 195-523 IP address to anybody on the host. The name of the network is the 195-520 network. The broadcast address is the 195-523 network. You may allocate the IP addresses 195-521 or IP address 195-522 to a host. This is a perfect example of a router's IP address range between two routers. One is the first router and two is the second router. The name of the router network is the zero network and if the routers want to send each other a broadcast, they'll send it on the th number three address. Okay, what is the next IP address? Right, increment it by four. 195.5.24 4 is the network number. You may not use it. The first assignable address is 195.525. The next assignable address is 195.526. The broadcast address for the second network is 195.527. All right, I hope you got that, and I hope you don't feel like you're falling asleep. We cannot assign the first IP address used for the network ID or the last IP address used for the broadcasting. And I've just put some notes here. I will attach these slides on the video to the video, so you will be able to download this if you would like to go through the, through these examples yourself. Right. Let's look at a slightly more difficult example. Now they have a class B address. An organization needs 100 networks. They bought a class B address. The address was 150.500. Determine the subnets for this network. Now. Follow the same process. The only difference is maintain the logic. And I'll show it to you now. Determine the number of networks needed and convert to binary. No problem. 100 is the number of networks they needed. Convert that to binary. I'm not going to do the calculations in order to save time. How many bit positions does 100 require? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We need 7 bits. We need to block 7 of these IP address bits in order to gain more networks. Now look, this is where the change comes in. The subnet, that, the class they purchased was a class B address, therefore its subnet is 255.255.0.0. So, all ones, all ones. But now, here is where the shift takes place. This is a class B address, so we are working on the next available octet. And in order to reserve seven network bits, we need to work over here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Done. What is the sub? What is the subnet mask? No problem. Two five five, two five five. All ones with the last one is zero, as you use the table I've drawn here. And you can see it is basically 255 minus 1, which happens to be 254. So the subnet mask, if you put this in into your IP address range, uh, then if you put this into your IP address section on your network uh, in network interface card software, you would then be putting your IP address. But here is the subnet mask. Now you would actually be putting in 255.255.2540. Your computer will know what to do. It's already got a subnet calculator built in. So this is just to give you an idea of where you would be putting this stuff in. For example, it, later in the calculation, you'll see that the IP address that we'll be allocating as the first IP address in this range 
will be 15501 there, 15500, remember, not the, the first IP address, the very next one, which is one, and then you can put it in the gateway. So this is where you'd actually be filling this in, just for uh, for your own reference. Okay, let's go back to the example. Now, what is the lowest bit position? It actually happens to be a 2. There it is. But here's the trick. The 2 is not sitting in the last octet, it is sitting in the second last octet. So you need to keep that in mind when you are doing your increment. The increment is the lowest network bit converted back to decimal, and that is the lowest network bit. Please note, network bit, network bit, network bit, blah, 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 network bit, host, 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 host. The zeros represent host, and that is why it says here the lowest network bit. This is the lowest network bit, and happens to be 2. But this is not just a 2. It is a 2 in this octet. So when we do the increments and find our network ranges, here is the trick. The first network is the 15500 network. But now we need to increment it by 2. So look. Look where the 2 appears. And again, and again, and again. So what is the last address before we can increment to a 2? It is 15511255. Why on earth would it look like this? Easy. If you add one more, to this 255, this is the highest amount of bits that the octet could handle, 255. If you add another one to this 255, it will then increment this octet. And that is why if you've got 255 and you have to go up one more address, it becomes 2. So we it's kind of like when you're calculating time. You can't say I have uh, 10, you can say I have 10 hours and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. But you can't say I have 10 hours and 59 minutes and 106 seconds. No, the 106 gets converted because the highest amount of seconds you can have is 60. So the minute you go over 59, it becomes 60. You've got to increment the next um, uh, column. So in time, if you've got, say, 9 minutes, and 59 seconds, and you add one second, it is not 9 minutes and 60 seconds, it is now 9 minutes, it's now 10 minutes. Right, so that is how it works. It's the same with IP addressing. All right, there are some extra information here. To check how many networks were actually obtained, you may use the formula 2 to the power of x, where x is the number of subnet bits added. Step 1, 2 to the power of 7 means 128 networks is available here. Obviously, I did not do all of them, but you are welcome to continue this and see if you can keep getting this logic correct. All right, there is another final example, and I'll quickly go through it. It is class A, 500 networks, 10, 0, 0, 0. Right, determine the number of networks needed, convert to binary. Right, now we needed to expand the table a little bit. 500 converted to binary actually requires 9 bits. 9 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Look at the subnet. 255, 255, 128. Just a 1 standing alone in that whole octet. So the increment happens to be the lowest network bit, which is actually a 128. Here is how we increment using a 128. 10, 0, 0, 0 plus 128. Now I've added this little formula here because of the error, well it's not actually an error, but where people get caught out is if you add 128 plus 128 you get 256, but we may not have 256, the highest amount is 255. So 10 0 0 0 goes to 10 0 127 255. We have to continue on the 10 0 0 network and then if I add 128, I get to 10, 0, 255, 255. The next increment or network range is now 10, 1, 0, 0, and so forth. I hope you're following the logic. Okay, so that is the first part of subnetting, and that was determining the networks. Now the alternative is determining the hosts.
Right, in part two, we're going to be determining the hosts. So let's start with the first example. An organization needs 30 hosts per network. They bought a class C address, 2162150. Determine the hosts for this network. Right, this is the solution. Now, it follows the same steps. Jeremy uses the same steps for this section as the previously, except for one little change here. And we're going to get to that now. The first step is determine the number of hosts needed and convert to binary. Right, they said they need 30 hosts. Note, they said 30 hosts per network. We're now changing from hosts, from network to hosts. Remember, in the first part, we did network organization. We wanted to uh, subnet according to the number of networks. Now we are subnetting according to the number of hosts. All right, how many PCs or hosts or servers are we going to have on that network? They ask for 30. Same step. 30 converted to binary is 5 network bits. How do I know that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right. So I now move to step 2. Reserve bits in the subnet mask and find your increment. They gave a class C address. So the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Now we need to reserve 5 bits. But the difference comes in in that we are now trying to save hosts. We are trying to make sure that we have enough hosts per network. So we're actually now blocking off hosts. And to block off hosts, we make sure that these are left as zeros. So that is why we are now focused on reserving the host bits now, the zeros. Count the host bits, bits starting from the right hand side. We need five bits. One, two, three, four, five. Right. So that's the only difference. These are the five host bits section to guarantee us having at least, and I use the word at least, which, you'll, um, which I'll explain later in the uh, special cases section. And what happens is we still go to the lowest network bit to get our increment, which happens to be 32. Why? Because there's the 32 where the bit is sitting. Okay, to get the sub, the uh, cider, it's 8, 16, 24, 25, 26, 27. There's the cider, 27. It is the Traditional subnet masking is 255, 255, 255, 224. How did I get the 224? Easy. 128 plus 64 plus 32 is 224. Right. The lowest network bit is 32. Step 3. Use the increment to find your network ranges. No problem. Starting at 216.21.50. Ending on 216.21.531. That gives me a range of 32 positions. Why? Because we start on zero in binary. So therefore, I can now assign my hosts from 2162151, 2162152, all the way up to 2162150. I may not use the 31 and I may not use the zero, for, as mentioned earlier. Now you can continue creating your network ranges. You might be wondering how many subnets we have created. The formula is 2 to the power of 3, 3 bits, no, you might be wondering how many subnets we've created, right, that's 2 to the power of 3 allows us for 8 subnets, how many hosts per network, the formula is 2 to the power of x minus 2, so it is 2 to the power of 5 minus 2 gives us 30 hosts Per subnet and that was what we wanted in the first place right now there is another example I'm going to go through it a little bit quicker an organization needs 50 hosts per network they bought a class C address the address starts in 1955200 determine the hosts for this network sure the solution is 50 hosts converted to binary requires six bits reserve the bits in the subnet mask to find the increment right we are saving the hosts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we have 6 zeros blocked off here. Now, what is the lowest network bit? It is sitting in the 64 decimal position. So the increment happens to be 64. The new subnet becomes 255, 255, 192. Why? 
128 plus 64 is 192. The cider is 26. 8, 16, 24. 25, 26, cider 26. I have the increment of 64 starting from the first IP address, which was 195.520.0. I'm now incrementing by 64, which ends on 195.520.63. Or the next, work, next IP address network. 195.520.64 starts where the increment is. So 0, 64, 128, 192. All right, moving on. Let's look at a class B address. They want 500 hosts per subnet. Class B address 150.500. Determine the host for this network. Same procedure, just remember the logic coming here to because it is class B. Determine the number of hosts needed and convert to binary. 500 is 9 network bits. Sorry, 500 is 9 bits. Now we are saving hosts, which means we are actually going to block off 9 host bits. That is the change from the part 1 to the part 2. Reserve bits in the subnet mask and find your increment. Okay, the original subnet was class B, so it's 255, 255, 0, 0. That is how the class B subnet looks like. Now we are going to block off 9 bits for hosts. 8, 9. So I'm saving the hosts here to make sure that we get the 500 hosts for each subnet. The lowest network bit happens to be sitting in the 2 decimal position. There it is. Now... The subnet mask becomes 255, 255, 254. There it is. That is the 254 subnet. We are just missing one here. Otherwise, it would have been 255. The cider 816 plus 7, 23. The lowest, bit, uh, the lowest network bit is sitting at number 2, but in the class B range. Please note B range. Use increment to find the network ranges. All right, we started with the 155.0.0 network. If you're going to increment it by 2, remember where was the 2 sitting? It was sitting in the 3rd octet. Right, so we are incrementing in the 3rd octet. All right, so this is how we solve it. Now, you might be wondering how many hosts per subnet. 2 to the power of 9 minus 2. And we're actually getting 510 hosts per subnet. So please note, we actually got more than 500. Okay, moving on. I'm now going to do one last example, and that is subnetting based on host scenario 4. And this is a class A address, the 10.0.0.0 address, and they want 100 hosts per subnet. Okay, 100 converted to binary is 7 bits. So we need to save 7 bits host bits, the rest we can make once, because once we've saved these seven, that confirms that we will have a hundred hosts per subnet. Then I'm free to make the rest of these now ones, because I want to have networks. All right, so the lowest network bit is now 128. This is my new subnet which also happens to end on 128. The cider is 25. The increment, now please note, look where we were working, in the fourth octet. So the increment happens to be 128. Now, 10, 0, 0, 0 plus 128 is actually 10, 0, 0, 127, because from 0 to 127 is 128 positions. You can increment it as follows. This is the solution. Right. Now, I'd like to just discuss the exceptions. We have, a, we have two types of exceptions. The first exception is if you were subnetting according to networks. And the second exception is if you are subnetting according to hosts. Now, this method of Jeremy's only works if you deal with these exceptions. And the exception is 
if you were trying to separate the, now we're going to part one, we, well, we're in part four, but it's part one of the subnetting, which was subnetting in order to get networks. Remember the first part of the video. So if you are subnetting to get, say, two or four or eight, 16, 32, 64, or 128 networks, then we have a problem. For example, if your customer says to you, we would like 16 networks, then you have to apply the exception. And the exception is valid for all the powers of 2, funny enough. So there we go. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. So you just need to know in your mind that if you are doing the part 1 of subnetting, which is subnetting according to networks, then you must be aware that if they want any power of 2, you will need to subtract 1 from the number of networks. And the logic behind it is as follows. When subnetting based on the number of networks, subtract one from the number. And I'll explain to you why we have this problem. For example, let's take the number eight. You are asked to create a network, a subnet, and they said to you, we would like eight networks. Now, eight, the number eight is, if you use your binary to decimal conversion, you'll see that 8 is, sorry, 1, 0, 0, 0. How many binary bits does the decimal number of 8 main, um, keep? 1, 2, 3, 4. So you actually, they are actually, uh, the, the calculation is actually asking you to reserve 4 bits. But we know that actually, in binary, you could get eight positions from just three bits. And let me explain to you why. Because if we have a one, a one, and a one here, that is seven. There we go. One, one, one. And that is seven. But now ask yourself, if we start on zero, and we go zero to seven, we've actually got eight positions. And it's the same for all the powers of 2. For example, 16. 16 is 4 ones. So let me show you that. If somebody says to you, we need 16 networks. Now, the number 16 consists of 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is 5 bit positions. But actually, you could get it with four bit positions because if you put the number 15 in there you get four ones now in order to get 16 positions you could have a one a one a one a one Fifth, you could actually have 15 and why is that so because 0 to 15 is actually 16 and the same goes for 32 so going back to the exceptions All the powers of 2, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, need, the, uh, need you to remove 1. So if they say to we need 128 networks, you must calculate for 127. If they ask you for 64 networks, you must calculate for 63 networks. And if they ask you for 16, as I showed you with the uh, calculator, you must actually do the example, the, the sum, for 15 because you only need four bits in order to get 16 bit positions and you only need uh, three bits in order to get eight the number decimal eight because zero to seven gives you eight positions zero to 15 gives you 16 positions zero to 32 0 to 31 gives you 32 positions. And that is why we say 128 minus 1, or 64 minus 1, or 32 minus 1, 16 minus 1, 8 minus 1. So you just need to remember that as part of the kind of cheat sheet for this method. So yes, this method is very easy, but it has this only this downfall, and that is if you are using subnetting based on networks, you must remember that if you get 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, any power of 2, and they say to you, we want 16 networks, you must make it for 15 networks. Then the sum will be correct. Now, part 2 
of this exception. If they are asking you to subnet based on hosts, we now have the reverse of this. And that is, if they are asking you for 3 hosts, 7 hosts, 15 hosts, 31, 63, 127, I hope you're seeing a sequence here. This is one number prior to the change, the power of 2. One number prior to the power of 2. So if they say to me, want 7 hosts per network, you actually add one and you do it for 8. If they say we want 15 hosts per network, you actually make it 16 and so forth. So these are the only exceptions that you need to remember in order to subnet. And I don't mind this problem because the method of subnetting is actually really simple. So I have been uh, teaching this method and the uh, students who have been using it have found this very useful because it is easy to remember the powers of two. And also it is actually uncommon that somebody says to you, please, can I have eight networks, subnet for eight, eight networks? These are not common numbers. They normally say 50, 20, 15. And also the hosts, they would normally say, 10, 20, 50. So these are not common numbers. So all you need to remember is when subnetting based on number of networks, subtract one from the number. When subnetting based on number of hosts, add one to the number. And that brings me to the end of my video on subnetting. A special thanks to Jeremy, whose video I, uh, whose uh, method I have been using. Right, cheers.